dear dharma friends we are discussing uh, kagavisana sutta this comes in the kuddaka nikaya in sutta nipata so basically sutta nipata is accepted as one of the oldest books of the dhamma and it represents very deep aspects of the teaching and again it is uh, mentioned that uh, it is one of the uh, books talking about the early years of the buddha's uh, life so basically we have discussed a couple of uh, verses in this sutta and there are many verses around 40 verses are there and we have already discussed uh, three verses actually all the verses are emphasizing the seclusion so don't know how many of you may leave your homes after completing this session because it is again and again emphasizing the life of a person who is uh, maintaining some sort of a solitude or solidarity uh, maintaining kind of a aloneness and again therefore these all the verses are attributed to pacheka buddhas and uh, our buddha actually mentioned to venerable ananda one after the other but anyway the commentary says all are Uh, the verses of the pacheka buddhas and once they have become the pacheka buddha so people are interested about how they have become or uh, how they have enlightened and what was the most uh, proximate cause proximate cause so once they ask that so they are explaining their attainment using this kind of a uh, verse so this shows some sort of a proximate cause of for their attainment and uh, each verse is therefore a kind of a theme or kind of a source cause for another person to become enlightened now let's go to the 38 verse so actually starting from 35th because it indicates that the, there are other verses belonging to other uh, suttas as you know there are many suttas available in kagga visana sorry in the sutta nipata and kagga visana sutta starting from the 35th verse and here now we have completed 36 36 and 37 and today we can start to talk on the 38th so it goes like this vanso visalo yatha visatto putte sudare sucha ya apekha ஒன்சக்கலீரோஸ்ரோஸ் actually vanso visalova yatha visattu as a white spread bamboo becomes entwined so you know if you have seen the bamboo trees so there are many bamboo roots many, sorry many bamboo trees as a bush there are many so all are entwined all are in a way kind of entangled so there are say roots there are uh, this uh, what you call the branches trunks all are somewhat entwined and therefore it is difficult to someone to cut it so if someone is taking a uh, say axe or a knife to cut the whole uh, bamboo tree so it is be difficult because there are many bamboo trees all together like a group putte sudare sucha ya apekha now there is a kind of similarly given this bamboo tree which is entangled in trying to various other things so similarly the people are entangled with their wives children and all the loved ones one sak kaliro asajjamano on the other hand there is bamboo shoot which is simply not entangled or entwined with anything it is simply going ahead being alone eko chare vispak kagga visana kappo like that maybe may i try to stay alone so in order to come to some sort of an understanding to this verse 
so we can recognize or we can go through the the story behind the verse actually each and every verse has a beautiful story and that is in a way giving us some sort of a poetic or some sort of a aesthetic aspect to this uh, kagavisana sutta and here also there were three pacheka bodhisattvas during this uh, the sanvant kastapa you know before our buddha the buddha gotama there is another samma sambuddha called astapa so during his time these three pacheka buddhas who are not yet pacheka buddhas they are actually developing themselves they are pacheka buddha to be and uh, bodhisattva and they all three became monks of the uh, kasapa buddha sasana so at that time so as we have discussed in a previous occasion also these three monks also are quite interested in developing mindfulness and therefore they are practicing gatha pachagata vata gatha pachagata vata so here what it means is that uh, when you are going outside the monastery so you are ke- taking your mindfulness while you are being outside still you are trying to maintain mindfulness and on the way back also you are maintaining mindfulness so this is called gatha pachagata vata while going out or while leaving the monastery you have the same mindfulness while you are being outside you have it and on the way back you are getting it back so this is also not an easy thing that we discuss on the very first day that some are capable of taking it outside while you are leaving your house leaving your monastery you are carrying it but while being in the outside you have to engage with so, so many activities as a result of that in between you, you lose your mindfulness then again you are coming back sometimes you don't have it sometimes you lose your mindfulness while engage with various activities and on the way back you are able to re establish mindfulness sometimes while you are going out or leaving the home you might not have mindfulness you may had kind of a trouble or you have some commitments and all these due to various reasons you didn't have mindfulness when you are leaving house but while you are engaged in the outside probably you may be able to regain mindfulness so on the way back you are able to reestablish so likewise such variations happens as we are developing mindfulness so this is kind of a practice that we need to uh, try to achieve in a way because constantly we forget to maintain mindfulness so that is the difficult part maintaining mindfulness is the difficult part time to time we may be maintaining mindfulness time to time suppose like today we establish mindfulness during the walking and sitting so this is kind of a regular program so during the program you may be able to develop mindfulness but how about the other days so during those days are you able to maintain mindfulness so are there are lapses in your mindfulness so these are the areas that we have to check out in order to have kind of a develop mindfulness or continuous mindfulness so these three pacheka buddha to be those bodhisattvas as monks were practicing this uh, gatha pachagata vata <clears throat> and after the uh, they are passing away they actually reborn in the heavenly realm heavenly realm so they couldn't attain arahantship during the kasapa buddha's time but as a result of their seela and uh, this uh, practice they were able to reborn in the heavenly realm then after that they again uh, reborn in the human realm and uh, one the the most eldest person as a, as the great king in the kingdom of baranasi and the other two at some other uh, kingdoms those are some provincial as some provincial kings so the interested point here is those two provincial kings when they have somewhat uh, grown up they were able to recall or they were able to regain their all some mind and at this time there is no any buddha samma sambuddha but now these two from their old habit from their old practice from their old develop wholesomeness was able to attain jhana and through that they were able to uh, reflect back 
coming out of the jhana they were again able to reflect back to various phenomena how they are impermanent and how to and develop vipassana and through that they were able to attain pachega buddhahood now they are so both of them become two pachega buddhas after they becoming enlightened they check how this fortune has happened because there are many people who couldn't do it but how we both are able to achieve it what was the previous karma and they were able to recall their past lives so they understood okay during the buddha kasapa they <clears throat> to and another person was cultivating this mindfulness and uh, as a result of this now with little effort we are able to achieve it and at the same time they got a kind of a curiosity what happened to this third person now we too are able to achieve it while being the provincial kings but how about the other third person who were quite helpful to us and who are actually uh, exhort us and uh, speak to us and again uh, always trying to avoid us from evil so he's he's the chief in a way so what happened to him so as a way of gratitude so these two pachika buddhas were reflecting and at that time they understood okay this person has become the king of the varanasi but unfortunately he is entangled with various activities so he has the kingdom which is a larger kingdom compared to the other two it's a larger kingdom so he has become the chief person the supreme king of the king of varanasi and uh, he has his wife children and the residents and all these things so he was quite entangled with all the duties responsibilities and everything so he in a way stuck there now once these two pachega buddhas understood that so they thought okay we need to show him the path as well because he is a, such a good person who used to exhort us advise us to show us the path but now he is in the trouble because he is quite entangled with so many worldly responsibilities so many activities and he is uh, with a lot of obligations towards the family kingdom so now he is trapped in a way now we should help him how are we going to help him so they thought okay let's find a good time and they recognize one time the king is coming out of the palace and going to a garden so while he is approaching the garden so they found a bamboo tree and they sat on the bamboo tree under the bamboo tree so at that time king was passing by and he noticed these two pachega buddhas actually what happened was there were many people around who are admiring the king and the when king was going by and uh, they were you know cheering the king and all these things and uh, the king was quite happy because the subordinates are cheering him so he was simply looking around and checking whether everyone is happy whether everyone is looking at me are there anyone who is not noticing me so likewise he was checking around looking around at that time he noticed these two pachega buddhas just sitting under the bamboo tree without any notice of him so it's a kind of a new thing for him because when the king is going through the kingdom so everyone coming i mean everyone stop their all activities and they come out in order to see the king but now these two people are not interested so they mind their own business so the king was somewhat curious so he get down from the elephant and then approached the pachega buddhas and they asked and then he asked and uh, bante what are you so it is new to him so he is asking who are you what are you they said great king we are called not getting stuck so this is the answer these two pachega buddhas have given so we are called not getting stuck we are quite free we can move around at any time we are quite free we are not entangled to anything we are not bound to anything we are not attached to anything as a result we enjoy a lot of freedom any time we can move any time we can 
go anywhere we like so we are co- completely free we are not stuck so we they mention that and then they quickly get out of the seat and lifted to the sky and they went out the king was somewhat shocked because these two people are not the ordinary people so he understood and uh, they are also telling a good lesson to him and he reflected to him self how about me how about my situation then he understood i am completely stuck i am in a mud so i have a lot of responsibilities i have to look after my queen i have to look after my children i have to look after my kingdom i have to attend to various majestic activities a lot of meetings in today's terms a lot of covid meetings and a lot of troubles are there so i i am completely stuck i can't go out so everybody depends on me so i am completely stuck in this situation how am i going to get out of this so at this time he is actually reflecting himself and how he has to be free and uh, what was the situation that he can take an as an example so he actually take the example of this bamboo tree that actually those two pachika buddhas taking the example of the bamboo tree where the bamboo tree has so many say uh, small small plants or trunks they are inter uh, they are entwined everything is in a, as a huge uh, say group and branches leaves uh, this uh, trunks and everything is entwined so therefore you can't uh, uproot it but on the uh, so similarly when a man when a woman is entwined with so many responsibilities he has to look after the mother he has to look after the father he has to look after the children has to look after the wife and maybe some certain children may be say sick and you have to look after them and you have to go to the office there are many responsibilities there and you have to go to the market you are, have a lot of responsibilities there so many many things are there quite stuck and he noticed that two bachika buddhas have noticed that there is one bamboo shoot just not entangled with anything not entwined with anything just going out as an independent bamboo shoot not getting stuck so that is that is capable of going out without any trouble so now he is taking the kind of an example from that inspiration from that and now he is deciding eko chare kagga visala kap may i be alone like a rhinoceros horn one should live alone like a rhinoceros horn so this is the theme or kind of a inspiration happen in his mind by looking around this bamboo tree so he understood this whole scenario so it has given him lot of inspiration even though all these things are there let me independent let me have my independence my freedom so by reflecting like this he was able to regain the concentration because he is a capable person who has lot of merits lot of hold some power and he with, without going long he too was able to become enlightened he has become a pachaka buddha now here actually once people have asked how what was the real cause what was the theme what was the inspiration for you to become a pachaka buddha so then he has referred this verse now there are we can learn few things from this uh, uh, situation that you know there are many responsibilities say as lay people you all have a lot of responsibilities and it is mentioned in the dhammapada also natam dalham bandhana mahudira jadayasam darujam pabbajanch now in the good old days so they are using various uh, you know uh, threads or props in order to bind people 
suppose there is a person a thief so if he want to take to some from one place to the other place so he was bound to something he was using a rope suppose his hands are bound therefore he can't exa- escape so therefore such bondage such a kind of a uh, what you call uh, iron or wood or hemp so those are the uh, bondages that they were using and those are in a way people consider as kind of a huge or difficult bondage but the wise say they are not the real bondage na na tang dal hang bandana ma hudira yata yada ya sang darujam pabba janch so the wise people say so those bondages those say ropes or say iron made made with iron or wood or hemp whatever it is so they are not the strong bondage but saratratta manikundalesu the the bondage or the desire the attachment people have to lot of these uh, manikundalesu lot of their wealth so they are attached to those wealth say to your house to your lot of other wealthy points so where the things so you are attached to that so you can't leave them if someone is trying to get that so you are ready to die for that so much of attachment not only that puttesu dare sucha ya apekha and not only that the most huge bondage is to your wife to your children to your husband so those are the huge bondage not those uh, previously what we mentioned those uh, bondage you seen the uh, say iron wood or hemp so those are not the real bondage but the real bondage is the desire the attachment that you have the clinging you have towards your husband wife children your belongings to your house your car to your wealth so that is the strong bondage so etang dalhang bandana ma hudira o harinang sitilang dukka muncha now this this bondage what we have discussed later is the supreme kind of or difficult bondage even that one has left aside they are able to cut it off etam pi chetvana paribhajanti anapekkino kama sukham pahaya so one becomes not interested of this sensual pressures and one will leave aside all every those things and then he leaves the home so this is basically available in dhammapada which basically says that the bondage of that you have towards your house what your your wealth your occupation your say reputation to your children to your wife is more more stronger than the bondage of the typical say shackles and all these things but there are people still who can even let go of that they leave aside that they leave aside all sensual pressures and are able to say live the worldly life so that is therefore quite similar to this uh, verse coming under this kagga uh, visana sutta we are here also this pacheka buddha also emphasized that we are without having kind of an attachment without having any kind of a responsibility towards those sensual uh, say objects so one is capable of being alone to have a solid solitude have kind of a solitude or solitary life when it is necessary so it doesn't mean in a way that uh, everybody has to become monks but on the other hand time to time at least having you a on time having some kaya viveka at least some physical uh, seclusion is sometimes needed because otherwise you are constantly doing and doing a lot of commitments a lot of responsibilities and you have no time to take care of yourself just to re- reflect or just to have kind of a introspection so such introspection is necessary for your own well being and you have to say you have to see how is my health how is my mental health 
So am I growing in the path properly? Or am I constantly in the downfall? So in order to have such reflection, you have to have some amount of rest, some amount of relaxed situation, and some amount of seclusion. So therefore, the seclusion is something that we time to time need necessary to enjoy. And it is not that we are trying to cut off everyone, not, not going to have any friends, and being alone every time and trying to become a selfish person. Rather, you being alone, you reflect about your own situation and you are able to recognize your various habits and uh, your own difficulties and your own shortcomings and can do a kind of a good retrospection, introspection. As a result of that, so you are able to rectify those issues you are able to come up with good solutions because you have some peace of mind. So therefore, having said that, so we can understand that this approach is quite uh, common in the, uh, what we call this uh, Kagga Visana Sutta. The whole theme is that. So with that, I like to conclude today's uh, Dhamma Sermon. Now I open the session for questions. I'm sorry, Bhante. Currently, there are five questions. Question number one, general question. Dear Bhante, thank you for your valuable service. We have immensely benefited from your practical teachings and techniques to develop a regular practice. During sitting and also in walking over this time period, got used to looking, uh, got used to look at the mindful object as a third person to see the transformation of the object as well as the changes in the mind when the observation is being done. This third person view seems gradually developing into something automatic and hab- habitual. I've heard that once you keep on practicing mindfulness, um, it will automat- automatically get seeped into or induced to other activities and day-to-day engagements. Is this the same for observing things as a third person? The reason for my question is due to the observations I have sometimes when I go to sleep, just before waking up or when having dream. Sometimes I perceive a sleeping, I perceive sleeping as a third person observing just before switching off. The same scenario in waking up as well. Multiple times when I was having a dream, I could observe it as a third person in between the sleeping person and the one inside the dream. I could willingly drift away from the dream to the body sensations of lying on the bed. Example, pressure from the head on the pillow and vice versa. This might sound a bit silly, but honestly, I don't know if the one who perceived, who is perceived as sleeping is having a dream or the one who is in the dream flying like an eagle above a beautiful waterfall is having a dream of a sleeping person. It is hard to say which one is real and which one is the dream. Thought of checking with Bhante if this is normal as a practice, uh, as a result of the practice observing phenomena as a third person. With metta, that's the end of the question. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we can answer in a way like uh, when we are going to sleep, so during the sleep, we are going to a more deeper levels on our consciousness and uh, on the just before the sleeping, so suppose we are in kind of a half sleep state, so we are going to another middle layer of the mind and uh, while we are in talking and activity and all this wake up situation, we have the typical surface kind of a mind. So even through the modern psychology, so they are coming up with these various layers, kind of a layer concept of the mind. And uh, again, they have recognized during these different levels. So the even the brain emits different kinds of uh, waves. So therefore, probably... When, when your mind is in a deep sleep, so you may be having kind of a situation where you perceive it. You, I don't know, it's difficult actually during the such a deep sleep. It is mentioned that there are no dreams, only the half sleep state that you may get dreams. So that is the kind of explanation typically given. Maybe during the half sleep state, half sleep state, probably you may have kind of an in-between situation where you are not awake, you are not deep sleep, but in the middle. So probably such perceptions are there. 
actually again during the meditation practice also we are coming to the uh, say half sleep state but it is not sleep so that's a difference so there are various experiments have done so the same kinds of waves are emitting from the brain but you are fully awake so that is the beauty so the mind is well relaxed but again mind is active so it's kind of difficult thing to understand say for example so suppose there is a wave form which is emanating from the brain emitting from the brain when the brain is fully active you are laughing you are talking and you are thinking and all these things there's a kind of a wave which indicates a uh, lot of activities happening you are quite active you are fully awake and on the other hand there is a wave form which emits from the brain when you are in deep sleep so so this uh, both are possible uh, in the sense while while you are awake the deep sleep kind of wave form is emitting from the brain when you are meditating especially in the relaxed kind of a vipassana situation so such thing is possible so these are certain uh, new findings and uh, so therefore i don't know whether you are going to the in between kind of a region and you are able to recognize still you are not into the deep sleep again you are not in the wakeful situation but in between so therefore don't know whether you are experiencing this sort of a thing so i have only this to say and probably i don't know there are some dream analysis uh, done through the modern psychology and don't know whether we can go for a such kind of analysis to give you a, a better answer and uh, this is what i actually i can say from my uh, limited knowledge yeah question number 2 of 5 this is a general question dear bante this is related to my mindfulness practice and being aware of thoughts and mental pro- mental proliferation the practice i have started with this program is really helpful to manage my day to day mental stresses and proliferation i am a hot tempered restless person who gets easily frustrated when others are not aligning with my thinking Due to this, I've gone through a lot of stresses, and people around me suffered as well. During the initial stages of my practice, this this situation became worse. But Bhante's kind advice helped me to continue with practice. After some time, uh, one year, I am in much controlled state to manage my frustrations, temper, and anger. I still get these negative feelings often when dealing with others, but can observe them process mindfully before they take over me completely. I am pleased to say that there was no occasion recently that any anger or aversion lasted more than 5 minutes. When I get aware of the body changes with these mental with these mental status and start observing my thought process the mental pro- proliferations go down easily. I can recall before practicing mindfulness I used to spend hours and hours or days with these agitations. now i can easily focus on my body changes first and then the thoughts arising after a few minutes the volcanic eruption of my thoughts go down and i feel the difference of the state of mind and the calm and serene mind this gave this gives me enormous joy and comfort similar to the comfort i get when i sit down for practice and feel the sitting posture the link between the mind and body is clearly visible in these cycles presume with time um whatever the agitation and stress coming up will go down as well. Thought of writing this down and appreciate the guidance and support we get from Bhante with Metta the same of the question. Yeah, actually it's good I mean not a real question a uh, kind of a practice that you are being somewhat successful. So keep going on and again try to uh, move more towards now the investigation because now you have already established mindfulness you have able to maintain a sort of continuous mindfulness. without stopping there try to see various phenomena more in a descriptive manner and uh, in, in sort of introducing uh, clear comprehension to your experience suppose you are doing walking practice and when your foot is touching the ground not just keeping your attention only only to the surface level rather recognize what are other phenomena available what are the changes happening is it the same way that the whole foot is being felt and what are the areas that is uh, recognizing different kinds of uh, 
say element characteristics so likewise so you got to somewhat introduce investigation so this investigation is the one helping us to improve uh, wisdom so that is necessary so therefore it is good that you are able to calm down the mind to relax and not to go for kind of an impulsive activities rather um, and uh, but don't, without stopping there now try to develop clear comprehension to various activities to various phenomena that you are experiencing during your sitting and walking then actually you can further grow in your practice yeah um the next question is number 3 uh, i need a bit of help so i might give it to it to read that it's in singhalese <laughs> Uh, as i want uh, this question uh, is actually a pali it looks like a pali stanza i just share it as well to you but i will read it out so dear venerable pante would like would you please be able to explain uh, upanna upanna kama vitakka nadi vase nadi vase ti pajaha pajaha meti So actually it is written in the wrong way, but uh, the proper, <laughs> proper thing is upan upan ne, not only actually upan upan ne, upan nang kama vitakkaṁ nādi vāseti pajahati vinodeti bhyanti karoti anabhavaṁ kameti. So similarly it is mentioned for vihinsa vitakka, similarly it is mentioned for uh, vyāpāda vitakka, and then it is uh, as a together taking vāsa. with the mention uppan uppanne papakase papake akusale dhamme nadivaseti pajahati vinodeti bhyanti karoti anabhavam gameti so you want me to explain what it means so is it the question yes madhi yes yeah. fine so basically so as you know so we have various kinds of uh, thoughts in our mind so typical gross form of those thoughts are categorized into three areas the kama vitakka the various thoughts pertaining to the sensual desire various sensual sensual desires in a way and then the vyapada vitakka the ill will and the vihinsa vitakka some sort of harmful thoughts and harming another so that kind of a thoughts are called vihinsa vitakka so those are the gross forms of uh, vitakka gross forms of uh, thoughts intentions we have in our mind so when such thought is recognized so rather than entertaining it you should try to uh, overcome it you should try to remove it but there are various approaches to do it now say for example you are not a mindful practitioner yet and you don't have enough mindfulness so when you are simply watching the mind assume that you get entangled further so this kama vitakka the desire the sensual desire start to grow so that indicates your yeah, your mindfulness is not grown yet on such situation you can use say asubha asubha bhavana so that you are sort of counteracting with the repulsive notes of the body because the, what is what is a reason is say kama vitakka sensual desire so you are counteracting it with the opposite that is you are recognizing the body reflecting the body as something loathsome so when you are reflecting like that the 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 arisen uh, sensual desire may start to subside but on the other hand uh, say if you are able to develop mindfulness and uh, once you are being aware of various sensual desires and you are able to keep your attention on to them then because of the develop mindfulness so those thoughts start to kind of fade away they start to blur they they start to uh, weaken so likewise there are many methods that you can approach depending on the situation and somehow you are trying to uh, remove the various thoughts these unwholesome thoughts arising in the mind so pannam kama vitakkam nadi vasiti nadi vasiti means that you are not uh, being patient with them you are not trying to just be with them rather you are now trying to take some action pajahati you are simply removing them na divase di pajahati vinodeti you are refraining your mind from thinking about those no deti byanti karoti so you are sort of uh, subsiding them or making them uh, fade away anabhavam gameti almost like they haven't arisen to that level so you are removing them so those are the terms uh, those uh, pali is referring 
question number four of five. This is mindful sitting. Dear Swami Nwansa, I have learned and practiced mindfulness on breathing and the walking process under your guidance. My breathing practice all the time ends up on focusing on the sitting posture and the elemental characteristics associated with the body. Due to this reason, I would like to try the technique of just be after sitting down comfortably. My sitting posture is full lotus or half lotus, and I can sit comfortably for 45 minutes to one hour. Appreciate if Sami Nuanza can give some guidance on how to start just be technique under these circumstances. Much merits. That's the end of the question. Uh, Tatu, can you repeat the first part? I didn't really sure. understand. Yeah, dear Swami Nwansa, I have learned and practiced mindfulness on breathing and the walking process under your guidance. My breathing practice all the time ends up on focusing on the sitting posture and elemental characteristics associated with the body. Should I set it right. up? Okay, so basically, I mean, uh, <clears throat> so just be is a part of practice that you may come across uh, you are, after you move further. So at this level, don't just try to just be because still there is something to do because uh, you are now trying to recognize various uh, element characteristics and at this level, you have to do it. So there is a task to do. So at this time, don't give it up. So but later, you will slowly come to the level of just be. So at this time, you are simply observing various characteristics of various elements and how they are behaving and their patterns, how they are quickly arising and passing away. So likewise, these are actually contributing towards the development of wisdom. So that development is necessary. That wisdom part is actually necessary. That we have to do purposely. So it may not happen uh, automatically. Rather, we have to intentionally develop this wisdom. So as we are developing this wisdom again and again, more and more, so what happens is, so this wisdom improves and it comes to some higher level. And Buddha mentioned, so as you develop wisdom, so the inevitable result is that there is a kind of a dispassion. You know, typically our mind used to grasp things. So it used to cling to various things. So that is the typical nature of the mind. It always grasping something. That is how it is sustaining itself. And uh, But what happens here, during, due to this uh, practice, what happens is, so you are recognizing various disadvantages, shortcomings of what you what this mind has grasped. So it is used to grasp something. That very thing is very fragile. That very thing is extremely transient. That very thing is, uh, say, not giving us satisfactory satisfaction. And it is completely vulnerable. It is beyond our control. So these kind of shortcomings now become uh, realized by the practitioner. As a result of that, what happens with the mention that uh, you are getting dispassion. So as a result of dispassion, now mind starts to let go. Now mind is giving up, not holding, not grasping. Because it understood there is no point of grasping. There is nothing worth grasping. So therefore, as a result of that, now it starts to letting go. So the letting go process is a natural process. It is not that you are forcefully letting go. As a result of the wisdom, you understood there is nothing worth here in grasping. So as, due to that, now the mind is naturally letting go. Once mind has naturally let go of, assume that you are not grasping anything at all. Suppose you didn't uh, use in the Dhatu Manasikara, you did element meditation. So basically the main focus is onto the Rupakhand, the material aggregate. And you are working on that. And you are recognized that there is nothing worthy of grasping here. And all these elements are quite uh, transient. And this whole body consists of these element characteristics, showing element characteristics. Outside they are also similar. So the whole physical world, so the mind is not now letting go, not grasping anything. Suppose at that time you are not grasping any feeling, you are not grasping any perception, you are not grasping any kind of a mental uh, attribute. 
or mental uh, state so then what happens so mind start to become somewhat unestablished so the consciousness become unestablished and uh, there is nothing to grasp at this level you should do and you shouldn't do anything at this level you should practice that just be so this is the area that you should practice just be and therefore you got to wait till you are reaching this way, this time or this region this area so at, until that you have to actually develop mindfulness wisdom and that has to become a kind of a continuous practice and you don't need to worry or you don't need to really uh, say have a kind of a anticipation on to got into this uh, just be even though it uh, i mean sounds kind of an interesting thing but uh, you can't artificially do it rather you have to uh, properly approach there yeah question number 5 i think this might be the last one uh general question as uh, regarding the talk dear panth related to the dhamma sermon for not getting stuck do you think in general not having a high profile job and not being in a marriage seems quite advantageous how about taking care of one's own mother and father which happened uh, beyond the choice of the individual can one get away from this responsibility even after becoming a rhinoceros horn that's the end of the question <laughs> <laughs> so now, now even now i am a monk now i am stuck in this mindfulness for young adult session so <laughs> so so basically i mean we basically have a lot of responsibilities but here the focus is uh, so sometimes people you know i mean uh, uh, they don't have time at all so they have too much responsibilities they don't have time for themselves and they are too much entangled and uh, so that is where they are becoming some, somewhat stuck suppose you are trying to uh, inform another person to uh, assume for this uh, program for example and they may give a lot of excuses i have this thing i have that thing i have to take my child to the college i have to take my child for the classes tuition and uh, oh i have to look after my parents and all many things are there so i can't therefore at attend to this program or anything else i can't i don't have time to go to a temple or i don't have time to look at this and that so many reasons are there many excuses are there and it may be true even and they are fully stuck and uh, therefore time to time we in our lives we may encounter these problems and uh, we have to see whether this has really come on our way or are we going after too many things you know i mean if we have sort of uh, many unfulfilled desires then we will never find some sort of satisfaction we are continuously having so much of desires and we are going after one by one trying to fulfill and it never ends we are constantly being frustrated because one after the other desires are arising suppose you are finding a job and then still you are not satisfied now you want to have a say promotion in that job suppose you are going to the next level that's still not satisfied you want to go to the next level so the companies also do like that so they have that kind of a hierarchy so in order to keep you employed or keep you somewhat involved to get the maximum from you so they have a lot of benefits fringe benefits to motivate you so you are going one after the other and always uh, uh, occupied with those and even the the occupation becomes your life and you don't have time for your children you don't have time for your husband to your wife or even to look at your parents because you are fully entangled in the job so likewise many situations are there but on the other hand as you have mentioned here so when you have a responsibility to look after your say parents suppose you are maintaining a single life still you have to look after your parents doesn't matter i mean uh, so that is that is there and uh, you can't simply neglect them and also going out and leave them to die and going out so that is also not the proper way so we have to find out whether 
now the responsibility has come to me and it is unavoidable that if that is the situation definitely we have to take that challenge it is not we are trying to be a kind of a selfish person not caring of others and just minding our own business rather when the real responsibility has come to ourselves so we should recognize that and through that we can understand how i am approaching it what are the best way of implementing it and at the same time another good thing is while doing it while engaging in that what are the various defilements arising is there any kind of a reaction is there any kind of a resistance because the situation is not only the opportunity giving us trouble but rather how we approach it say what the kind of the resistance coming from our mind say you have to look after your children so if you have kind of a resentment towards that so i have to look after them i have to do this i have to do that husband simply has gone out i have to look them so the you know this is this kind of a complaining mind always make things worse it is not really the job making us really unhappy rather this complaining mind always complaining always finding fault so this kind of an attitude actually making things really worse so if we are able to recognize that complaining mind then probably we can simply let it go and we take the opportunity okay looking after children or looking after the elderly parents so we take that opportunity and we are doing it whole heartedly and with lot of compassion loving kindness so that way we are using the opportunity to develop spiritual so therefore whatever the opportunity we should try to take into advantage to our spiritual growth so that side is also there for us to think so therefore it is not that we are trying to be selfish just looking after ourselves and neglecting everyone else so that is not the message actually I don't think there's any further questions um in it um that, that's it um so um because we have no questions we'd like to finish up early um I'd like to thank um Bante for giving up valuable time as you just mentioned sort of stuck with this program uh, <laughs> stuck with helping us um and also to so pass on our merit release me fortunately today a little early <laughs> we'll try to see if we can keep this up. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> um, but we'd like to pass on our merits as well uh, for giving up your valuable time and helping us uh, with all these questions, and also to the people seen and unseen participating and helping um, and gaining some sort of insight from this program. And lastly, to the participants, because without you, there would be no program. With that, I'd like to end the session. Everyone's welcome. Yeah, they're on Sunday. They're on Sunday.